Hey y'all, how's it going? Well, welcome back. So from the title, you may not, may or may not um, have an idea of what I'm talking about, but um, super cooling is an energy kind of tool that you can use if you live here in Arizona, where I live. So it gets super, super hot here in Arizona. So if you live in a house that has, I guess it can really be any kind of house because I've even heard of people that lived in apartments that are supposed to be energy efficient and they had extraordinary um, electricity bills in the summer. And so, you know, I've lived in Arizona kind of, you know, for the better part of, I think, I don't know, I guess close to 20 years now. And so this is the first time I ever tried it and it's probably because this is the biggest house I've ever lived in and so it's the biggest bills I've ever had. And so la and last year, um, it just really felt like our electricity bill got really exorbitant. And so this year I was really committed to looking for ways to kind of cut down on that electricity bill. And a friend of mine that I went to high school with, um, just uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, her husband got transferred here a couple years ago. And they're like us, and they really like to save money. And so um, there had been a time that we had chatted with them about super cooling. And um, I'd, I don't guess I'd really ever checked back with them to see what they thought about it. And I, and I had talked a little bit with my neighbor about super cooling and we knew that they super cooled. So what super cooling is, is committing to keeping your house really, really cold for one part of the day and then during the most expensive part of the energy usage time here in Arizona with APS. Um, you either completely reduce your air or you change your habits dramatically around electricity during that time. And for us, that means turning off our air conditioning, um, as crazy as that sounds. So let me go back to our friends. So I've never followed up with them to see what they thought about their electricity bill. Um, but I did last year happen to follow up with our friends. Um, they, the, our neighbors have the same size house as us, but I guess we tend to conversate more with them about saving money. So I followed up with my friends the husband's name is Marcus, and I'm like, Marcus, so how much money did you end up paying? Um, what was the highest electricity bill that you had, you know, that summer that you started super cooling? And he's like, 250 bucks. And I'm like, what? Like, 250 bucks for your highest electricity bill? Like, and I'm over here with like 400 to 600 dollar electricity bills. And last summer, I will say that my pool pump probably ran a whole heck of a lot more than it is this summer just because we've got a better management system over the pool presently. So when I found out that he was, you know, had having bills of like $250 a month during the hottest parts of the summer, I really, really was compelled to give this a try. Now, and and so there's that means a lot of things. So formally, between three o'clock in the afternoon and eight o'clock at night, Monday through Friday, we used to always have a standing rule to not do any type of laundry during that time. But we didn't, we weren't mindful of cooking, we weren't mindful of running the um, air conditioner, and we weren't mindful of running the dishwasher. We just didn't do any type of laundry during that time. Because they really talk about, um, you know, your washers and dryers, your oven stove, your AC and your pool pump being kind of like the biggest pools um, on your electricity bill. So I, I don't know, I guess we thought we were really making some big impact by limiting when we washed our clothes, but really we weren't. We started this experiment in the, the end of April, the last week in April, because that was the first time that here in Arizona, the temperatures were like kind of tested out into the triple digits and I really just wanted to see is it something that we could even do and so we tried it at the end of April and 
um, it was doable. And so we committed to trying it in May to see what our results were compared to last year. Um, so before I get into our results, I want to kind of explain to you a little bit more about the kind of the theory or the idea around super cooling. So before we did super cooling. I am a really cold person. I've got a sweater on right now and even I've got a tank top on but even if I had a t-shirt on by now I would have a sweater and sometimes even um, some flannel pants on because I'm really I don't mind the heat that's why I live in Arizona okay so we used to during the summer we kept our thermostat at about 82 and I wouldn't say that that was entirely comfortable for everybody um, it was comfortable to me um, and I thought that by keeping it at the same temperature that we were doing a service to ourselves in some way too that was just I don't know maybe a myth that I told myself so um, to make this transition for us, um, a lot of people, when they super cool, so super cool is, again, um, using the time outside of the peak hours with APS, which are 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. during the middle of the week, Monday through Friday. They've got some caveats for holidays. Outside of 3 to 8 p.m., we keep our air conditioner running at 75 degrees. Um, some people bring the temperature of their thermostat all the way down to 70 degrees. I'm not sure what my friend Marcus pulls his down to. So when you, what you're doing is bringing it down one as cold as you can stand. And if you're at work, um, maybe it wouldn't even bother you. Um, but as cold as you can stand, but also cold enough to get all of the major appliances in your house and hopefully your tile and any other stone in your house to absorb a lot of coldness. So for us downstairs especially, we've got all tile everywhere except for a small area of carpet um, in the great room. Like there's a, our kitchen's all tile, the classroom and what would be the formal living room is all wood. Um, so that 70, so everything down there becomes relatively about 75 degrees. We've got a big granite countertop. All the countertops in the kitchen are granite and all of that countertop becomes cold. The bathroom downstairs has got granite in it. Everything becomes freezing cold. The outsides of all the appliances, you can even tell it's cold. So the theory is, and it really does work, is that when we turn off the electricity at three o'clock, what happens is our house slowly warms up because um, all of those things in our house are holding cold nest okay now upstairs it's a little bit of a different story because almost everywhere upstairs is carpet besides the the children's bathroom and our bathroom is um tile and we've got granite in our bathroom on our counters but the the kids bathroom has never been upgraded so it's just got some you know some whack 90s countertop that is not real it's just plastic so it doesn't absorb any cool air so um, the upstairs is definitely probably the part of the house that gets the warmest the fastest But for the most part almost everybody hangs out Downstairs or outside in that kind of evening time And if you're downstairs because it is cooler down there and all of the stone and the tile and the appliances have held in that cold energy If you've got a fan on it really doesn't feel um, Like that bad of a deal. It's it's definitely doable and the highest temperature even now with the temperatures outside getting up to like 117, 111, the hottest our house gets by eight o'clock is 85 degrees. And at eight o'clock is around the time, it's within an hour of about everybody, um, especially the younger kids going to bed. So it's it works out as a good time to turn on the air. Um, and then it takes, I don't know, maybe an hour or two for it to get back to, feeling like, oh, the air conditioner's on, and then by, you know, midnight, it's freezing to me in here, and I'm ready for a blanket, whereas usually um, in the past in the summer, we would just only have a sheet on our bed, and it's it's still a, little, a light blanket for me, but um, it's a lot cooler in the house. So, um, now, as far as the results go, um, like I said, you can... Um, 
the results as far as cooling the house and how it warms I've given you that but in terms of our bills um, so what I found out is in the first month May of 2020 compared to May of 2019 we saved about hundred and sixty dollars compared to the previous year now um, this month um, in our in our you know everything goes kind of backwards the way the billing is um, but then for June um, compared to the year before we saved right at about a hundred dollars now I'll be honest and say that in the month of June we weren't as my mi as mindful about cooking like when we cooked we could have definitely improved our numbers in June by being more mindful about cooking. Um, Mr. Marcus's wife, um, my friend Chalessa, she is on it. She's got her cooking and everything done by three. And I noticed in one of their posts from Facebook that they've actually even got a cool modification on their outdoor grill that gives them almost like a grill surface like you'd see in a restaurant. So kind of a flat thing because he was out there cooking chicken fried rice. So we definitely um, could get way more intentional with using the grill, cooking outside, or making sure that the majority of any of our heavy cooking, like using the oven, gets done before 3 o'clock. Um, because I really want my bill to be... Um, around $250 but last month we were getting up there closer to 300 but 300 is still better than 600 and still better than 400 so I'm really really grateful um, for the savings there and I'm we're all committed to it everybody's pretty comfortable with it um, like I said about the only time that it really um, clicks in is sometimes like I maybe I forget to get it turned back on at eight o'clock and so if it doesn't get turned on until the girls lay down sometimes they're a little you know gripey about that um, but for the most part I just um, I know there's some really cool thermostats that you can get out there that I think Mr. Marcus runs his from his phone um, but we just I have a timer set in my phone about 255 that tells me to turn the AC off and we have one at 755 that tells us to turn it back on and um, so we do really well and if you've got APS you can really dig in deeper to your bill and see when those heavy usages are for your family and then be able to kind of easily say okay this is from cooking or this is because you know this week we had this going on and if you're committed to saving money the way that we are then um, you'll maybe make some changes there with what you're doing so I'm curious to know if you have ever tried to super cool your house. I know that there are some people on the Nextdoor app. I look at Nextdoor. It's it's like a soap opera to me. That's what I do is get entertained by people on there. But I've seen the conversations on that app about super cooling and there's been different people that maybe if they didn't have the best insulation or they didn't have the best um, air duct system um, that it or maybe even a really older AC unit it wasn't as successful for them so if you've ever tried to super cool your home or you see the benefit in trying to super cool your home um, definitely let me know down below and uh, as always I want to thank you so much for um, letting me check in with you and share with you um, our experiment with super cooling our home as a means to save a little bit money on on our electricity bill this summer especially since everybody is home like nobody is gone anywhere in a really long time so it's good when we're all here and we're all using electricity that we can save some so I hope this is helpful for you and I hope you have a great day